Hey everybody, welcome to the O365 Pulse. Um, this is our weekly show where we go through everything that's changing on the roadmap. So I'm gonna kick things off to Tamara, who's gonna take us through um, something that she found exciting in the in development stack this week. So there's only like 32 items. So you might see some battling between the team of who gets to talk about the item, but I'm gonna let Tom and Tamara go first. Um, so Tamara, go ahead and pick what is exciting about in development this week. Sure, Microsoft Teams Windows 10 native notifications. So you can choose the style of your notifications, built-in Teams or Windows native notifications. And the latter brings a suite of benefits like respecting focus assist mode, which enables you to avoid distracting notifications when you need to focus and integrating with Windows 10's Action Center to help you review your notifications in one place. So that's coming out end of June of this year, so expect to see that soon. Go and ahead, I don't want to hog them all. So. Well, I was going to say, and that's for GCC, GCC High and DoD, because everybody who's got a regular tenant actually has that now, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool. I tried it. And then went back. It wasn't quite all that I wanted it to be, but yeah. It was nice. I liked it. I like it. I tried it and I kept it because then I just turn everything off. Cool. <laughs> so um, one of the things on the list that I saw is Outlook and Exchange for Business. Project Mocha is moving to the Outlook board. So there's a lot of things going on here that you may not have known anything about. Project Mocha was or is uh, kind of an experimental way that you can set up Outlook to have like a list of tasks and, you know, to do's and notes and emails that are all pertaining to a particular subject or topic and you can move them around. It's kind of like a nice big bulletin board that you can do. Uh, then they turned around and said, hey, we're going to allow you to do this in Outlook. And so Project Mocha as a project, I think kind of started to go by the wayside. Well, now what they're saying is, hey, if you created any spaces in Project Mocha, we're gonna move them for you automatically to the calendar board. That way you don't have to worry about trying to keep two things going. You can do the whole thing with Outlook on the web. So if you started to play with Project Mocha, Outlook on the web now has that same functionality. And if you had stuff out there on Project Mocha, you should see it in Outlook on the web shortly. And this should be sometime in July. Very cool. Well, I have one um, missed activity email in DOD for Microsoft Teams. So an email is automatically generated to let you know the activities that you missed inside of Teams. Um, this is great because if you're away from your computer and something is going on from Teams, then you get that email that says, hey, you missed this. Um, and it's now coming into the DOD environment. And so as more and more users are going to the DOD environment and those are starting to get stood up and launched, um, as many of us that are close in that space know, um, that's gonna be a great feature that's coming out. So super excited that that is finally rolling out um, over there or it's in development, so it should be rolling out soon. How about you, Adam? You got anything in this in development area? Sure. So I have one kind of lighthearted one that I'll do one nerdy one to, you know, stay, stay informed, <laughs> stay in my own lane. The lighthearted one was actually, I thought was really cool. It's uh, the thing we talked about for the play of the week. It's the idea of uh, Microsoft Teams reporter in side-by-side -side presenter mode. So the basic concept is if you guys, you know, like watch the news in the evening, fairly often someone's talking and there's like a new, there's like video going on over their shoulder, or maybe it's someone side-by-side. -side. Well, right now when you share your screen and you're talking on video chat, like your video is like a tiny little square in the bottom corner of most people. Or if they click on your video, then your video is 90% of the thing and the presentation is a tiny little square. So this gives a better balance. It either gives you the reporter feel where someone will be there talking and it's kind of like blown up slightly bigger, but not 90% bigger over the shoulder, or basically be two screens where it's a person talking and the presentation next to them side by side. Uh, from the demos and the screenshots I've seen of this from Microsoft, it looks pretty cool. It's supposed to be out as early as, as next month. Uh, so I actually, to me, this is just kind of a nice little quality of life thing that I think will be cool. And then uh, for my nerdy on on brand one, um, they're now doing uh, for Microsoft Teams 
uh, host intrusion detection for virtual desktop environments on Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, you don't really need to know what that means. Just know that there's multiple different ways you can look for threats and look for viruses and attack vectors and stuff. Host intrusion detection just means the compute you're looking for stuff at the computer systems. It's not on the network level. Well, most of the time you're doing virtual desktop environments, you're looking on the network level because the only way to come in is through the network level. Um, but adding host intrusion detection would be like putting an actual antivirus uh, on the host system itself cool, um, which is just a more robust system that would be just monitoring the network. So the fact that they're adding this in is basically just a net new security option for people that are doing Windows Virtual Desktop, which is kind of cool. Awesome. Anything else, um, Tamara or Tom? I'm good. Awesome. Well, one last thing, um, live script, <laughs> merging works together. Live transcription um, with speaker attribution is coming down to additional SKUs. So they're going to be expanding it to Office 365 E1, Office 365 A1, Office 365 and Microsoft 365 A3, um, 365 A5, F1, F3, and the Microsoft 365 business basic SKUs. So if you're running one of those SKUs and want to see that expanding to that, know that it's coming and they're working on development there to push it to additional SKUs. So Thanks. again, if you're using that feature, now it's coming to additional SKUs, which is great there. So going into rolling out, how about we start with Tom? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to mention this because it's been like <laughs> my white whale is when is this going to show up i think they've been <laughs> promising it for like two years and that's for sharepoint and teams the folder in the team site visibly being connected to the channel uh, this was something that they were talking about doing in fact it may even go back to golden folder days <laughs> i think it does i think it does <laughs> where if you were looking at the document library in the microsoft or in the uh, sharepoint site and the SharePoint site was associated with a team, then you don't really have any way to easily tell what folder is valid to do something with, because if you delete it, then you screw up your team site and the whole bit. Well, this is going to, uh, now it's easy to tell which folders within your library have an associated Teams channel and chat associated with it, right from within the SharePoint user interface, yay. It should um, just have a no when you yeah. try to delete it. It should be like, no. Uh -uh. Nope, not <laughs> happening. Sorry. Pick something else. Uh, but that is rolling out now. So pretty soon, if you go out there and look at your documents library and you see something, a folder called general, that general should look a little different somehow to let you know that that is actually associated with your team's uh, space. Yeah, that's great. Um, Let's see, there's one for GCC High, so the together mode is coming. So people can, you know, feel together in Teams meetings. I honestly, other than the Microsoft demos, I don't really see many people using that in the wild. Um, I, I don't know. I, it's not that I don't think people should use it or we could use it. I just never have seen people using it. Um, but it's coming to GCC High, so... Um, there we go. Maybe I'll make it a point to start using it next week. Um, I, it's just one of those features that because it's not naturally like it doesn't naturally kick on. I just don't even think of changing it. But um, there we go. How about you, Tamara? What do you see? Whiteboard additional content mm -hmm. types. Participate in teams on the web can now insert additional content types like shapes, images and notes grid. So they're giving a little love to whiteboard, making it a little bit easier to use. Very cool. I, I have a super nerdy one, but one that I thought was cool. I've worked at both of these things a lot in the last like month or two. Um, so it's the idea of Microsoft information protection, granular conditional access policies via sensitivity labels for SharePoint online sites. So the reason this is kind of cool is it's basically combining like three different disparate technologies into one for one user experience. So back in the day, they combined sensitivity labels with labels at, for, for what was an E5 feature uh, under what they call the unified labeling experience. They then rolled that out as default functionality to everyone inside of Office 365. And then information rights 
Rights Management became Azure Information Protection, which became Microsoft Information Protection, which you could do on the SharePoint sites. Um, but since you now have the unified labeling experience and you have MIP that can sit on SharePoint sites, you can essentially create a label that what that label does is trigger MFA prompts or conditional access prompts. So MFA is probably the most obvious one. I could have a label that says anytime someone wants to access something that has this label, require two-factor authentication on them to make sure that they are who they say they are. And then you could apply that label now, blanket to a SharePoint site. So say I have a SharePoint site that had a whole bunch of really important internal financial information or something like that. I could go in through auto labeling and auto classification, say anything in the SharePoint site I want you to apply this label to, and that label could have the sensitive label that says, I require a conditional access prompt for multi-factor authentication. So therefore, when anyone went in and tried to access a document on that SharePoint site, it would actually prompt them for multi-factor authentication before they can move forward, which is kind of cool because, again, this is like two or three technologies kind of coming together for one unified experience. And I think being able to tell an executive, oh, you have some really sensitive internal information and you're afraid about putting it in the cloud, well, don't worry, I can do this. And then only people that can actually pass multi-factor authentication, which is may way more secure than just letting someone in because they're in, uh, have the ability to get in. So it's pretty cool and uh, yeah, nice security thing. Thanks. Yeah. Well, cool. I think um, suggested replies for uh, Outlook for GCC is coming. And so that's when you're in Outlook, you're going to start typing and then it will do a suggested reply. I love those. Um, so that's coming to GCC um, with a couple different languages. So that is coming soon. So I like that one. Um, so we have that. And then um, anything else, Tom or Tamara, that you guys see inside of there? Uh, awesome. Just, real, okay. oh, go ahead, just uh, real quick for Microsoft Teams for iOS and Android. Uh, we talked about this briefly last week. It's now gone from in development to rolling out immediately. Uh, but that is inline message translation in channels for the Android and chat mm -hmm. or a Android and iPad, iOS, whatever. Uh, but basically, <laughs> <You'll get there. laughs> yeah, the, yeah, that that, it's going to give it to you in a different language here, folks. But basically, it's really nice in the fact it allows you to select a message, say translate, and then it will translate into whatever language you have selected as your target language. So that's real nice if you're in a multi-global, multi-language, multilingual type situation. Uh, be looking for that if you tend to use Teams in a mobile environment. Very cool. Well, Tamara, let's let you kick off into launch today. Fabulous. I am so excited about custom attendee registration and Teams yes. webinar capabilities coming to general availability. So you can add a custom attendee registration page to any meeting or webinar to better manage attendance before and after any engagement. Following registration, attendees receive an email confirmation with a calendar invite. I am so happy. <laughs> I am that's so like, happy. That's like a real, a real, real webinar tool there. It is, and then the fact that we'll be able to schedule webinars with like up to a thousand people with the same Teams app that you use for meetings and webinar capability support, registration page creation, email confirmations for registrants, host management for attendee video and audio and attendee reporting, plus interactive features like polls, chats and reactions. I am so happy. And it's going to come down from her upstairs office, just and buzzy, and I'm going to have to deal with it and go with it. A separate window to manage your live events when you're producing it, which even better because I don't know if you've done a live event with other people and you have other people, but it can just get and get a little hairy sometimes. And when that thing gets stopped, when it's not supposed to be stopped, it's a bad day. That's so, <laughs> so all of these little things, like there's like things that we call the lighters, and then there's like explosive joys. <laughs> these are explosive joys. I'm just saying, just saying. Oh, too so, funny. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. These are things that we have seen Microsoft employees experience first hands and then go, I think we should have probably thought about that. <laughs> so I'm very glad somebody, and not that they weren't, I mean, the product was great to begin with, but it was very evident when the whole world went remote, it became very evident 
very quickly that we needed some of these tools. So, and they have built them very fast. So I'm excited to see these. So yes, I'm with, these are explosive joys. I'm very excited about these tools. <laughs> Well, I've got one quick one, and then that probably pretty much does mine for launched. It's Excel on the web. Uh, mm -hmm. You're now able to use ink and highlighter to annotate your Excel spreadsheet on the web. So this is something that if you have a nice touch screen uh, set up and you want to use ink or you want to use highlighting to make notes on your spreadsheet, you used to be able to do that pretty well on the client side, but the browser really didn't support that. Well, now the browser does support it. It is launched. It's rolling out December of CY 2020. So, you know, it's about time. I love it. Um, I like the focus mode for SharePoint Modern Pages is launched. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That's kind of been in rolling out for a while. So being that it's launched now, I'm, I'm kind of excited about that one. Um, email notifications in project. I feel like that one's also been in rolling out for a long time. I feel like we've talked about that one for a long time. So I'm glad to see that one in launched, which means by next week it should be off our list. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to think, are there other, um, are there other things? It, Adam, is there anything for you this week in launch that you kind of wanted to chat through? I'll briefly mention, although this could have been skipped, it won't have been the end of the world. They're coming out with a Microsoft Compliance Center DLP Solutions Overview page. It basically just says they'll have widgets and recommendations on policy and other actions and guidance in a section in the Compliance Center. I don't necessarily know what recommendations you can do for data loss prevention. Either someone's doing it or they're not. Um, and if they're not, like, I don't know if you just say, hey, you may want to block sensitive stuff. But uh, regardless, this is Microsoft trying to make stuff more accessible to maybe non-security users and stuff. So probably good. Yeah. Well, and it's the same thing, a topic management dashboard for Microsoft Viva. So you can do things and then they'll give you a... Uh, a dashboard with the same thing with suggested and different things like that. So maybe we're getting into the era of suggested dashboards. Um, so very nice. We shall see. So it's very interesting. We are getting into the season of the end of the Microsoft fiscal. So if anything has been like previous years, we should buckle up and wait for the world's largest updates <laughs> over the next two or three weeks. It will be a plethora of changes because we'll be cleaning out the roadmap, which is what everyone does by the end of the fiscal. So it should get interesting, I think, over the next couple of weeks. I don't think it means a bunch of stuff is actually going to be rolling out and they're meeting crazy deadlines. I think they're going to be cleaning house on the roadmap over the next two or three weeks as they wrap out the end of the fiscal. So Today I imagine updates, we have 30 canceled items. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I don't think it will be that crazy, but I think we'll see things like um, in canceled, we might have 30 canceled and 26 of them will be this merged with this and that merged with this. So you can count on us to spend the time reading through the list and making your life easier. Um, but if, if anything's like that, you know, previous years, the last two years doing it, that's where the, the crazy starts to kick in around this time of year um and then july will be nice and quiet because it's the best weather in seattle and everyone is you know relaxing off to, you know after the end of the fiscal and <laughs> then it will kick back up again so i think that's what we can predict but this week was kind of quiet i imagine it getting a little bit crazy from here on out but all really cool updates um, thank you guys for joining us. This one was kind of short. I love it, but we'll be back next week with another one. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Thanks. Bye, Bye now. Everyone.